So it looks like I've got a bit of a mess in there. This is exactly why you don't want to let something like this go. Could really end up with an expensive repair just for a, a cheap $11 shock boot. So I went with the Polysport brand ones. Uh, it seems like these are actually just a, a touch longer than the stock ones that were on here. Should still work fine, they'll just be a little more scrunched up. I'll try to put a link down in the description for some that are just maybe a tad shorter than these, but uh, we'll see what I can find. Basically all I'm gonna have to do is just slip this over the top. I did clean this out pretty well, and then I worked it in and out a couple times uh, just to make sure that I was not picking anything up off of the seal yet. So yeah, these will work, but they're a little, uh, little on the loose side, it seems. So I guess the uh, zip tie that they send along maybe uh, should have been an indication of that. This isn't a real uh, high tolerance part, I suppose, so I'm sure it'll work just fine. So now that I've kind of got this where I want it, I think it's time to put this bracket on here. Uh, I'm going to put it on, but I'm not going to tighten it down until I get this back on the bike. I've got my wrench ready in my back pocket. Gently put this back in. Now I'm just going to match how far the top is sticking out here with the other side. If yours are like mine, you probably have little marks left on the shaft anyway, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out where it was. So then all that's really left to do is to tighten these guys back up down here so my marks on my bolts match up with my marks on my triple tree and the same thing up top here. Technically the right thing to do would be to look up a torque spec and to ensure that you're getting it to what Yamaha recommends, but I'm gonna feel pretty darn good just about lining those marks back up. Uh, of course, I also will be kind of feeling along as I go to make sure that it feels right. You're gonna have to make your own decision on that. Uh, again, I would recommend doing what the manual tells you to. One thing I probably should have mentioned, I guess maybe just to remind myself, is that you should not absentmindedly be touching your brake lever in a squeezing motion because your rotor is not currently inside of your brake caliper, meaning that your pads have nothing to uh, squeeze really. So I don't think I really did any damage. It should just slide back on. I don't really think I pushed any fluid in there, but uh, definitely kind of caught myself off guard there a little bit. <laughs> Whoops. So then the next thing I've got to do here is just slide this bracket and the top of the boot up a bit. So a couple things to note here, if you are gonna use my goofy marker method here to make sure your bolts end up in the right spot, the back side of this bolt is not an attached washer. Uh, they are separate, so one of my marks ended up over here. Luckily, I did mark on the, the bolt head itself, so I was able to line those up, but just be aware of that. Make sure you're marking on the, the bolt head. Don't count on the washers, because like uh, a couple of them over here too are not gonna line up. And something that'll probably save you some time is just completely removing the fastener. Uh, this went much quicker, uh, both removing the old fork boot and it's gonna be much quicker putting this new one on. You can just bend it out and then wrap it right around, close it up, and throw my screws through it. So if this was an ATV axle, I would probably slather this all in grease. I guess maybe I should still be doing that, but this thing's got 6,000 miles on it and it seems like this is okay. So I certainly don't wanna trap any dirt. I'm just gonna leave it dry like this, I guess. Let me know what you guys think. Should I put grease on this? So at this point, there's quite a bit that's gonna have to come into alignment here before this will go together. Uh, we've got this little nub here that sticks out from the left side of the bike, and I believe that's gotta interface with something to do with the speedometer. Yeah, there's this slot down here that that's gonna have to line up with, so that's gonna have to come up a little bit. I guess now would actually probably be a, a really good time to take a look at your bearings and check those out. Mine really seem like they're just fine. But basically what you're looking for is any wobble or uh, obviously any sort of notchiness or catching. Seems like that all came together. There are no washers laying around. Tire spins freely and quietly. Speedometer is in the right spot there. So this nut actually does have a front and back to it. If you notice, it's got some little teeth that kind of stick out and will actually grab your threads. Uh, and that's basically just to kind of act as a repetitive use locking nut. So instead of a nylock nut that you can only use a couple times, or really you're only supposed to use once, 
you can repeatedly use this and it will still grab those threads and it shouldn't ever back off on you. There is a torque spec for this. Uh, you guys can look that up and use it if you want to. I'm just gonna get it good and tight. So next is gonna be connecting the speedometer cable and the brake. So I'm gonna snip my zip tie off here. Not the brake line or the clutch cable. Definitely don't want to force your brake pads on here. And line up my holes here. So I noticed that my speedometer cable was pretty nasty uh, when I pulled it out. Uh, there's an O-ring on this guy up here, and it seems like that's supposed to keep the nasty stuff out of the gears, but obviously it really kind of didn't. And uh, now that I think about it, I probably should have taken this apart and cleaned the gears up, but eh, it'll be fine. Uh, I think I will probably clean the dirt that's sitting on here off and uh, maybe throw some grease on there before I put it back in. So now this part is a little bit tricky because what you gotta do is line that up with the gear on the inside. I think we got it. Gently spin the wheel, make sure nothing's binding. A little bit of brake noise. Also not a bad time since we did mess with the brakes to just ensure that they're actually working. Seems good. So then I've just got some bracketry to put back here. Where did this thing go? Right about here somewhere? There's actually a pin uh, that goes inside of the hole there. Uh, that's actually gonna be just behind your speedometer cable. You can kind of see it right there. So that's gotta all get lined up. Goes through the pin, it's kind of just resting on the top of this rib there and then your brake line runs to the back side of it I'm just gonna throw the fastener in there and the reason you've got all this bracketry down here to kind of hold everything sort of in place but not really is because when your wheel goes over a bump and the shocks are compressed this stuff all has to have a place to go that's not gonna get wrapped up in the tire and also hopefully not thrown too far out on the trail to grab a branch so now all that's left is the fender, and I really wish I could say that I was going to be installing this up there, where personally I believe that it belongs and looks best, but for now, it's gonna have to go down here. We'll fix that though, don't worry. If you're interested in seeing that video or anything else uh, TW related as far as maintenance stuff goes, if you wanna see me out riding the trails on the TW or the Tenere 700, then make sure you hit the subscribe button here. If you wanna see more videos every time that I put them out, make sure you click the bell after you subscribe so it lets you know. Put a video out at least once a week on Saturdays. Otherwise, if you guys can get out and enjoy this beautiful world, make sure you do that today. However, if you can't, well hey, here's some more videos to check out from me. Thanks for watching guys, take care, stay safe, and stay swanky. Get out, ride them trails when you can. Life is short. The woods is beautiful.